House Demir exists only in rumors and secrets among the streets of Ravnica. Officially, they exist simply as couriers, journalists, mailmen. But if you know anything about Ravnica, you know they're actually a series of trained spies and assassins. They infiltrate and gather information about all other guilds by either disguising themselves as members of other guilds, spying from the shadows, or sending the recon creatures such as like a Demir spybug to listen into their conversations. Now how do you take a guild whose entire focus is to stay hidden in the shadows and portray them in such an open medium such as art where you need to instantly know what you're looking at, either from looking at the card or just looking at it played across the table from your opponent? Well, in his 2018 article titled Building the Guild House Demir, Chris Gleason goes over the basic design principles that were kept in mind when they redesigned the guilds to fit uh, the new guild of Ravnica set. He speaks about the new season of autumn as well as the changes to the power structure within the guild, but for this video we're going to focus on his final two lines. Secrecy is House Demir's weapon and its best defense, and the guild is hidden even from itself. Demir agents leave no trace of their covert activities, destroying the memories of witnesses to their crimes and even wiping out their own memories of their completed assignments. Now the artwork of all Demir cards in the set follow this statement perfectly. It hides its members before and during a job, but afterwards show their destruction of memories and evidence as well as their indifference to being noticed once their job is completed. The cards are split into these two groups through the use of shadows in each respective artwork. They hide during the job and come out of the shadows once it's completed. With this connecting theme, we can examine the various secrets of House Demir. Let's start first with the guild members during their respective missions. Firstly, Darkblade Agent. Here we see a spy blending into her surroundings. The shadows here work to hide her body while she allows her face and arm to be highlighted by the light around her. This is done so she blends into the artwork behind her. Her arm is in position in a way that if anyone glances at her, she'll seem like a character in the painting reaching for the crown. A deeper detail in this piece is what she's wearing. While at first glance she's just wearing a typical tactical suit that any kind of spy would wear, upon a closer look, it's meant to mimic the suit worn by the woman in the background of the original painting, both having textured arms, sharp shoulders, and even similar shaped blades, all to add to the illusion that she's part of the painting that she's trying to blend into. Uh, Citywatch Sphinx is another card which does a very similar thing of hiding in plain sight. What's noticeable first from a flavor standpoint is that Sphinxes are usually part of the Azori Senate, or other similar Ravdekin organizations. Yet this one's here depicted in a Demir card. It's a spy. It's a perfect spy that would arise very few suspicions if you see it flying into a courtroom somewhere. But in the context of this image, while it does not hide within the shadows, it hides in plain sight disguised as a statue. While uncommon, statues and gargoyles do exist in Ravnica. They are seen in various different artworks just in the background. Usually they're part of a cathedral or just atop a spire. And by positioning itself atop a dome roof, the Sphinx can blend in if somebody tends to see upwards and somebody sees a very greyish Sphinx on top of a building. Blood Operative and Enhanced Surveillance both show a Demir agent under an archway hidden by its shadows. Now this comes up in a few other pieces, the archway which you're just standing within, but we'll get to that a little bit later. The first one has a Demir agent scouting on an assassination target, and the second has someone gathering information. Yet in the second one, not only is there an agent in the shadows, but another walking towards him to deliver information, and even a third on the rooftop looking down on the crowd. Note how the two on the street are calm, since they're very hard to notice within the shadows and they tend to blend into the crowd with their hooded clothing. But the one on the rooftop has his weapon drawn and looks ready to either attack or run away in case he's noticed. Now these two pieces serve as a reminder that you can't really have shadow without light, especially when it comes to symbolism. In these pieces, if you notice where the shadow is, and all the shadows and the darkest parts of the painting, they are the archway in both of them, and the Demir agents themselves. You can even see in Enhanced Surveillance, the Demir agent is noticeably darker than all of the people around it. That's for a reason. If you take the darkness to symbolize the Demir, you would take the opposite being light to symbolize everybody else, who they're fighting against. In Enhanced Surveillance, the light is coming from in the building, and they're not in the building. They're outside of it, even on the roof, they can't get in, and they need the information inside the building. So the light there symbolizes a goal, or what they're trying to get into, or trying to get around of. In Blood Operative, the light is way in the background, as far away as you can be, but it's focused on lighting up the three people it's looking to attack. Deadly Visit shows an assassination about to happen. And in this art piece, the Demir agent is completely covered by shadow, and in a way, symbolically, becomes a shadow and it's placed from a compositional standpoint as a part of the background of the painting. The same effect is shown in Unexplained Disappearances, but here goes a little deeper. 
where the Namir are just shadows, literally, and smoke approaching the man about to disappear. Now, one interesting detail that I love about this piece is the man's expression. He's about to be kidnapped, right? Or even murdered. But he's still calm, as if any resistance or fear or any sign of emotion is completely ineffective and pointless. He simply concedes to the attack. A similar showing of a Demir attack through smoke is in the card art for Sinister Sabotage, where the shadow coming from the weapon itself forms the Demir logo. Now I find this piece really interesting because the Demir are secretive. That's kind of their whole thing. They don't want to be noticed, they don't want to be seen, and they don't want anyone to know that they were there. So for them to brand an attack with their logo seems really out of character. Now I could just pass this off as a flavor error made by the artist, or we can look at it as an action of intimidation, like the Mafia would do or any kind of organized crime organization. Possibly they were trying to scare this specific Izzet member into doing something or keeping quiet, kind of reminding them that they could like mess up any of their inventions or weapons whenever they really wanted to. And this fits a little bit more into the characteristics of the Demir House, which pairs really well with the fear shown in this man's face. Now, if we continue to take shadows as a symbol for the Demir itself and their different methods of attack, if you look at the artwork for Disinformation Campaign, the shadow motif presents itself as the twisting of truth. As you go from person to person and the rumor keeps spreading from left to right, each person slowly starts getting more and more enveloped by shadow. The shadow, of course, being the Demir itself. There isn't really much else to say about this piece, but it's just a very well-structured painting and I like it. Now there is one card that breaks this shadow motif of the Demir artworks, and that's in Whispering Snitch. This piece serves more as like an exception to prove the rule kind of thing. In this piece, we are a citizen of Ravnica being told a rumor about someone else's wrongdoings. If you look, we're in a similar archway as Blood Operative and Enhanced Surveillance, and the shadows cover the archway and the Grand Bonitos as well as the statues in the background. Now the Demir agent and us are not in the shadow because in the context of the piece, we are given light in the form of information from the agent. Now, this kind of twists everything around because, well, we're the victim here. We're actually being told either wrong information or information that we're not supposed to know. But to us, it looks like we're being given light by this Demir agent who doesn't have any insignia, so they're just kind of a random guy to us. And this break in the motif kind of serves more as a way to place the viewer in the setting of the piece and not necessarily seeing it, as, seeing it as an objective, omniscient third person, as all the other pieces do. And I believe this is why breaks sometimes serve a good function when it comes to motifs like this. Now, in order to properly and thoroughly analyze the second grouping of Demir Agent artworks, where they're shown after their missions, you have to kind of look back at the last part of Gleason's article where he explains that the Demir Agents often erase their memories as part of completing a mission. Now, as an art director, how do you actually show this? show memories and thoughts in a visual medium such as an artwork, let alone a single frame of it. Well first, you have to define it as a physical object, and this is done through the art of thoughtbound phantasm. We know the spirit made of thoughts and memories from its name and just its mechanics. Mechanically speaking, its ability allows it to grow in size and more times the demure surveil for information. Memories are then defined as the long strands of blue tape with uh, random markings through them. With this definition laid out, we can apply it to the other artworks and further analyze them. Never happened has the Demir agent literally pull the memory out of what occurred from the mind of an Azorius cleric. Notion Rain has the same types of tapes fall from the sky. Now, how exactly does that make any sense at all or even to the mechanics of the card? I have no idea. I don't know how you can have memories rain from the sky or how you pull them out of mind and just throw them as rain. But regardless, the same blue tape can be seen in mission briefing. It can be interpreted as that blue tape being the mission briefing itself, or the agent just got the tape and is briefing whoever is on the other line of the communicator. Both are valid, but I lean more on the latter. Now quickly, look at Never Happened, Mission Briefing, and Nightville Sprite. These all have shadows covering their eyes as if to mask their identities. Not only that, but all of them are taking place mid-mission. Once the mission is over, that shadow is gone. This can be seen in the art for Divi's cover-up and Divi Informant. Their jobs are completed, so they have no more use for the shadows. House Guildmage is back at base analyzing some memories or whatever information is within the blue aura. And she doesn't need to hide anymore, she's in her own base, so the shadows are gone here as well. Lazav the Multifarious has his eyes covered by shadow, but his own being is a disguise. The various statues around him hint at his ability to be anyone, anywhere, if need to be. 
Now, the absolute best example of the various motifs that hold the art of the media together and portray the use of shadows, eyes, and the blue memory tape thing is Thought Erasure. This agent has completed their mission and is about to erase the memory of the event from their own mind. Their eyes are droopy and slightly unfocused, their body language is laid back and fatigued, but we're watching the erasing as it's happening, about halfway through if you could really guess. The tape is only partially disintegrating into the air, and she's not completely knocked out. But the best sign of this is in the shadows in the piece. Instead of the usual eye shadow that covers the other agents, or the lack of shadow shown in the aftermath pieces, the shadows in this piece are fractured into bars running across the entire piece. Half his shadow, half his light. While in the piece, these can just be window blinds off frame, from an artistic perspective, they tell the viewer that only half of all knowledge remains in this agent. We're about halfway done. Now light being knowledge and shadows being the lack of it is a common tool used by artists as far back as art itself. But the way the symbol is used and applies to various pieces to form a singular connecting theme and identity are what's incredibly impressive about all this. The House of Demir is nothing without knowledge and secrecy, and their artworks perfectly tie them together with shadows and light. So thanks for watching guys! Sorry this video took forever, but it was recently like my birthday, and then within a week my sister's birthday, and then just a bunch of stuff happened in my life, and I've kind of just been really busy with everything and couldn't really find time to work on this. Now I've learned personally that rushing something is kind of always bad, and I hope just getting to work on this in the little burst of time that I've found kind of works out at the end. And I hope waiting kind of all paid off. So if you liked it, please subscribe, it would mean a lot. I have seven more guilds to go, so you can probably look forward to that. I hope these videos get better by then. Well, till next time. Goodbye for now.